Good morning and happy Wednesday. Yes. We made it to hump day. Welcome mm -hmm. to the morning sprint. I'm Brittany Weir. And I'm Zaphne Gray. We're going to have a good time today with a couple stories. And again, our biggest apologies for yesterday. We had a couple technical difficulties. We mm -hmm. couldn't do a show, but we're hoping we got that. We hope we have that fixed so we don't have to go into that no more. But yeah, like I said, typically we have such a good time with these stories that you guys have for us today. We're going to bring you a lot of cool stuff. For example, this right here. It's a graduation for the photo albums for Aww. one particular family. We're talking about quadruplets walk the stage at the same exact time. We have all the details on that story, and I'm pretty sure how happy their parents were for sure. But first and foremost, let's get to this particular story. We were going to talk about it a little bit yesterday to kind of tease to it, but obviously we've been covering this breaking news over six-year-old um, Kingston, Kingston mm -hmm. Campbell, unfortunately, who passed away. Well, the Lynchburg community still rallying behind him uh, and his family with multiple different events, including a series of basketball games. Yeah, players uh, as you can see on your screen, showed their skills and support for the six-year-old's family in a two-night event. The Jubilee Family Center basketball court turned into uh, Kingston's court honoring the six-year-old who was shot and killed in his home last week in Lynchburg. Well, ever since the tragedy, the Hill City has remained devoted to supporting Kingston's family. You can't, you know, stay in the home and all that stuff right now. So they have living in rain with that food to be taken care of. So many other funeral expenses they'd have to take care of. So it's a lot on them. So the community is saying, we got your back. We're supporting you. The series of basketball games called Ball for Kingston raised over $1,000, which would go to the family. So again, a major good deal right there is one of those situations where, you know, the community tries to work to turn a family's tragedy into some triumph, you know, and yeah. to help them in something like this that everybody loves and to know that this, this little baby lost his life because of somebody else's, you know, sick actions. Mm -hmm. um, that that's just leaves a person speechless, period. And you were on the one, you were on the scene working with that. Yeah, this story is uh, yeah, never an easy, never easy to cover anything like this, and it's been really hard following this. Um, I can't even imagine what that family's going through, but if we can take one positive out of this is seeing how many people and how much the community has just rallied behind this one family and how much they support them and how much the people in the community want to see this stuff yes. stop. They're mm -hmm. sick of it. They voice their concerns on this, um, and so, you know, just happy that we can cover, you know, that aspect of it, too, of how everyone's just coming together for this family. Definitely. So you guys can look at that full story on online at WSLS Com, and the fact that they laid them the rest, I think, yesterday, too. Yeah, so you can follow all those stories, and obviously we're still uh, trying to figure out how to help police find the suspects responsible. So if you know anything, you see something, please say something. Call law enforcement as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now moving on to a story of spring is definitely in the air. We've felt it over the past couple of days. It's been warm out, and that means it's nearly time for graduation. So many people getting ready and excited this week. Well, Virginia Tech will hold commencement ceremonies in Lane Stadium starting today and then running through Sunday. So just over 6,800 students will earn their bachelor's degree. Over 3,800 of them will graduate with honors, meaning they have a cumulative GPA of over 3.4. Congratulations. Right. you got Liberty University. will also celebrate the spring commencement this week, marking the 50th graduating class. The main ceremony will begin at 7 at Williams Stadium. We're told the keynote speaker will be Franklin Graham, who is the son of Billy Graham and the president of Samaritan's Purse. So again, this is a very exciting season for a lot of our families out there. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember when I graduated, how pumped up I was. You know, it was just a, a, all of the things that we've work for yeah. you know and it's about to come to an end and you're about to start a whole new chapter yeah. so uh yeah congratulations to them and if you guys are going let us know uh and we want to see your pictures mm -hmm. of how much you're supporting your little family graduate that'll be also good to send to our yeah. pennant if you want to wish anybody a congratulations for this week put in that comment section below uh let us know uh, the name of your uh student and what school they're graduating from we want to make sure we give everyone the recognition they deserve yep. but yeah i remember my college graduation was probably one of the happiest days of my life because yeah. all my family was together and all my friends were together and it's just it's a great time so they're gonna have a great week i love it what about you rebecca what was your graduation like uh i am a pandemic grad so yeah. no. i actually didn't have a graduate oh, oh wow i'm so, so sorry i'm just waiting for the day that i finish my master's and then i can walk across with my hood so oh big, look at yeah, you. long cape i'm gonna that's what i'll do i'll, I'll enjoy that one yeah there hey you girl go. well either way just as much congratulations to you because we have you here now we can see how intelligent you are. Yeah. Um, we are so proud of you. Yes, but right now I want to do a drum roll because okay. we were trying to do this yesterday. It was a really cool 
school reveal live on Q99, and we now know who will be with Foreigner, um, yeah. the high school group. Yeah, so Hidden Valley High School students will soon prove they're as cold as ice. So That's no right. That's because they'll be singing live on stage with Foreigner thanks to the Q99 choir contest. Winning Ensemble will perform with the classic rock band during their concert at the Salem Civic Center later this month. Hidden Valley will also receive $500 for their choir program. We got a lot of votes, and the difference between first and fourth place was only 6%. So it was a really close battle between all four of our high school choirs. And as we reported, Christiansburg High School, well, they performed with Warner when they came to town in 2019. This is so exciting for all those yes. students. I can't even imagine what that feeling is of, one, being up on stage, but, two, getting ready to perform with right. them. Right. So, so there you go. That was so fun. A lot of heartbeats there. They, they want to know when love is. Go ahead, girl. Sing it. Want them to show me. Yeah, well, hey, I can't wait to see go. it. I'm excited. <laughs> I know they're excited, too. So congratulations <laughs> to them. All righty. And now, um, like we were saying before, it is been a beautiful outside these past mm -hmm. couple of days been going on my walks loving yeah. the sunshine and the tank top and the shorts so we've got meteorologist chris michaels here with you for what today's forecast is set to bring happy hump day guys looking at uh things pretty comfortable out there here the next couple of days lower humidity warmer friday and saturday looking at temperatures in the low to mid 80s with afternoon and evening showers and storms coming back into the mix heading into the weekend that's a check your forecast. I'll be back with you guys on the sprint tomorrow morning. Well, we love hearing that lower humidity because uh, mm -hmm. you know us with our hair. Yep. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy <laughs> to hear that for today. So thank you so much, Chris. Uh, but we have a cool story for you guys. Obviously, we all know the Roanoke Star. It is an icon here. Yes. Um, when you come to the city, it's just kind of the, the star city, the symbol. You have to go see it, get your picture. But now you could end up owning the Mill Mountain Star while also making a difference. Check this out. Kiwanis Club of Roanoke will once again auction off the landmark to raise money for community projects and scholarships. The highest bidder will get naming rights for a year along with a special unveiling ceremony. The 88 foot tall structure has been around since 1949. Organizers say that they're excited to partner with the city for this unique fundraiser. And right now the highest bid is $2,000. The yes. auction though. It runs until Thursday, so you still got time if you want that star to be yours. But like we said, so iconic. I can't imagine how many photos have been taken in yes. front of that thing. It's just uh, Roanoke staple. It was crazy because, you know, it takes me forever to get out and explore oh, different things. <laughs> but Don't get me started. I finally did it a year after I had been here for a while. And it was really breathtaking going up to it. And I can, because I've seen different people with their pictures. And it lights up too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it lights I, up at I, night. I saw it in the daytime. Okay, so we'll have to go at night because yeah. it's a totally different feel. And you can see the whole city lit up. Oh, we'll wow. We'll have to go. We'll I bet that's very beautiful. So, yeah. yeah, it could be yours if you guys got more than $2,000 laying around or whoever bid $2,000. It might be theirs. Yeah. Either way, it's going to a good cause. Yeah, so let us know if you guys are planning on bidding My in favorite that. night at Mill Mountain Star is... Uh, like Veterans Day, mm -hmm. and oh, yes. uh, it turns red, white, and blue. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yes, I love that. I love that. I have plenty of pictures up there with Philip and I. We always yeah. take them like potato head pictures, so it's like just our foreheads. And it it's is really <laughs> hard to get a, a good photo. I will say, if you don't yes. have someone taking it for you, it is kind of <laughs> difficult. But um, yeah, definitely lots of photos up there. Uh, and it was originally a Christmas decoration. Did you know oh, that? Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I the star was. That. They were just going to have it up for Christmas time, and then people were like, no, don't take it down. That makes, I mean, whole well, history behind it's it. It's very beautiful. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it could be yours, and if it is, please let us know if you guys are interested in getting in on that auction process. Uh, we've got some cool news to tell you guys. Ben Folds coming to Lynchburg this September. North Carolina native is best known for the lead singer in the 90s alternative rock band called Ben Folds 5. Now he's introducing his new album, What Matters Most. Folds will be at the Academy Center of Arts on September 12th. Tickets go on sale Friday. Have you ever heard of him before? Uh, unfortunately, no, I have not, so okay. I apologize. Uh, but I know there's tons of talented people coming out of this area, and I feel like I keep learning about more and more of them, like, as I keep working here and living here. Right. Um, we have so many musicians. I know Old Dominion, the country mm. uh, band that's also coming to Roanoke. They're from the Bedford County, so lots of talent yes. music here. Yes, that's a lot of cool stuff. What about you, Rebecca? You know, are you familiar with Ben Folds? I'm not. I'm trying to... You're looking through some stuff. I'm trying to, like... <laughs> Look up any of his like famous music, like yeah. his like biggest hits, and they're they're not hitting they're not hitting the yeah. place in, in, well, my, now in, in my memory box. 
<laughs> well, if you guys know who Ben Folds is, whether you know him or not, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a fantastic show. Seeing as though his tickets are going on sale now, and and I guess the performance is at, on, in September, so it should be a really fun, fun, different experience. Yeah, if you have any song recommendations for us, drop that in that comment section below. Uh, but also, we have some more news for music news for you. The late pop superstar Prince, mm -hmm. he is being honored in Minnesota as the state renames a stretch of the highway yes. after him. Yes, purple rain. Mm -hmm. We know that one. Mm -hmm. uh, with purple well, they pen. They signed it. They signed it with the governor signed it with a purple pen. Yeah, that was sense. just about to say, girl. There you go. So it's like a purple <laughs> pen. Minnesota Governor makes Prince Rogers Nelson Memorial Highway official. Highway goes past where Prince lived and recorded and where he passed away seven years ago now. Oh, well, Prince's friends and fans are covering all costs related to the renaming. His sister hinted music Prince recorded before his death could be released soon. Yes. A lot of people looking forward to mm -hmm. that, but a great way to honor him and uh, yeah, lots of fans. So fun fact about that, okay. and this is what I learned when I was in radio, because I actually didn't start appreciating Prince until I was an adult, because I was always mm -hmm. a Michael Jackson fan. Okay. And then I started hearing his, him, you know, just random songs and then watch Purple Rain on the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, this man is very talented. But uh, when I was working in radio, they told me that Prince had an actual recording some type of recording studio in multiple rooms in his house oh. because if he ever got an idea, he would just sit there and start singing. That's how talented That's this really man is, cool. all his little guitars and stuff. So, yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy about that highway for that. I know a lot of people who maybe keep, like, a notepad and a pen by their nightstand yep. because, like, you wake up in the middle of the night or you go, oh, I have a really cool idea. You jot it down and then you go back to sleep. Yep. Whatever. So it's like that kind of thing, like, oh, I got to get this real quick mm -hmm. and then go. So. See, that's how you know he had money, oh. too. Just oh, yeah, you got know. A, something recording, like, a whole full-blown studio ready? in multiple parts of his house. So, yeah. What's your favorite Prince song? We want to know. I think, I'm trying to think. I think I just like Purple Rain. Purple I know rain. it's a classic, but I think I just yeah. like it. Kiss, Purple Rain. They're all uh, good. Beautiful Girl. If you want Jaffney to sing any of them, put them <laughs> in the comments section. She'll look for you. <laughs> look, Rebecca's over there like, don't even come Let's to me. Let's go. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, on to the story that we teased earlier uh, at the beginning of the sprint. We all know there's nothing like the bond between siblings. I know mm. me and my brothers, we are like this, so I get this story. But a set of quadruplets. They're making history at the University of Alabama. That's right. All four graduated in different majors from marketing to education. They said they had to coordinate three different graduation ceremonies, but thankfully for their parents, they were all on the same campus. I'll start like, I'm like, oh, I'm a twin. And then I'm like, well, I'm actually a quadruplet. And they're like, wait, you're both? I'm like, yeah, inside of it, we're <laughs> twins. But yeah, it kind of just starts with the one and then continues on to, and they're like, they can't believe it. Well, the siblings, they now plan to go back to southern Pennsylvania to live together and start their careers. Okay, I have so many thoughts, so many things. First okay. off, where in southern Pennsylvania are they from? I need to know Blue that because... Blue something? Where? Blue something? Okay. <laughs> Blue uh, something. Look it up. <laughs> you need to look that up, Rebecca, <laughs> because I'm from Pennsylvania. I need to know where these quadruplets live. Also, I love seeing this. Yeah. Their parents, one, so proud, two, probably stressed as anything to coordinate. <laughs> like, they said, coordinate all of these and make sure they show up for all four of their kids, because I know mm. that's a problem my parents always struggle with having four kids. Right. Is we and want you to also have everyone. a set of twins, and you're... Oh, yeah. My, so. <laughs> so, if you didn't know, I'm um, my brothers are twins, James and Joe, and my parents with the two of them always struggling mm. to be there. So one would have one thing, one, and they would just split up. My dad would go with James, mom would go oh, with Joe. And that. you could tell they felt horrible, but that's what happened, but they did what they could. And yeah. I'm, everyone recognized that. So congratulations to these four. Um, but then also reminds me of something else. When my brothers graduated mm -hmm. college, they had four sets of twins all graduating. Oh, yeah, and guess what? Tell me about this. All four sets of twins had the same birthday. Oh, that's, that is very So my brothers had that at their school. That was really cool. Uh, that they were a part. It was very kind of weird, but it was like really cool. Um, yes. So yeah, it was I fun to hear these graduation stories. Does Bluebell? Bluebell. Okay. Does that ring a, does I that that ring a bell? It does ring a bell. <laughs> ring I was like, bell. blue, blue, white. What are you saying? Bluebell. Okay. Well, I know where that is. Let's go ahead and get Jazzy Jazz in. Hey, Jazz, how you doing? Uh, we're good. What do you think about that that uh, graduation? That was a pretty, I bet that was a hectic day for the parents, huh? Oh, absolutely. Definitely <laughs> a hectic day because I know, like, graduation day just in general mm -hmm. is a lot and a lot to process and a lot for parents and the family members. But, I mean, it's awesome that they all graduated together and they all made it, so super proud of them. Definitely. Okay, hit me with your favorite Prince song. Oh, definitely Kiss. Hey, I That's love it. Favorite. Yeah, so good. <laughs> it makes you just jam out because you just can hear how passionate and talented he was in anything that he did. 
Yeah, he was absolutely passionate. Like, he was absolutely incredibly passionate and mm-hmm. super talented. He knew how to play so many different instruments, and he could play every single instrument in his song, just about. Yep. And honestly, it's really inspirational for musicians out there, including myself. Oh, look at you. I hate you with the bad stuff. Now, do we have any comments today? Let's see. No comments today. Says you can't always... tease me like that, man. Don't tease me like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pause. Let's see. You know, I thought that we had comments, but unfortunately, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can, um, but to leave a comment is super easy. We really want you guys to join the conversation. Just um, chat back and forth with us. This is a good way to interact with us and get to know us further. But all you have to do is go to our website, click on the Morning Sprint article, and then there's a comment form right beneath the article. You can also um, leave a comment in the chat box on YouTube. Super easy. Perfecto. Well, Jazz, thank you so, so much, girly. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Thanks, Jazz. All righty. You All got right. anything else before we get to these headlines? I have nothing, girly. Let's get it started. All right, guys. <laughs> so coming up later in our newscast, we have uh, Virginia is celebrating National Travel and Tourism Week with a boost in funding. Well, Governor Glenn Youngkin just announced more than 18 million in marketing initiatives to drive visitation through 2024. Very exciting stuff there. Yeah, plus women should start getting mammograms done at 40 instead of waiting until 50. That's according to a recommendation from the federal task force. Other health groups still have different guidelines when it comes to how often to screen. So we'll have all those details as well in our later newscast and online too. And a sad story coming out of Rockbridge County. A family uh, that was, you know, originally planning for a graduation is now preparing for a funeral. Well, tributes are pouring in for 18-year-old Devin Riley, a young man with a bright future who was sadly killed in a car crash. Well, 10 News reporter City Jack Summer has been following this story and will bring uh, more details on that and how the family is grieving coming up in our later newscast. As always, you can find all of these stories on our website at WSLS.com if you would like to see further details. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our hump day edition of the Morning Sprint. Mm -hmm. We'll be back here again tomorrow morning, WSLS.com for the Morning Sprint.